Yeah. Uh, I'm the first year PhD from uh, Professor Wong's group, and uh, nice to meet you all. Uh, I will introduce, uh, we, me and Yu will introduce our, about our lab uh, in minutes. So maybe we can uh, share more information later. And Yu Great, maybe Jerry can start first, and yeah, we, I, I can introduce the later part of the slides. Okay. okay. Great. So let me go ahead and share the video. And share my screen. Okay. All right, can everyone see that? Can I get a thumbs up? Okay, okay, okay. Looks like everyone can see. Okay, so here we go. Wang's lab in ECE is working on computer vision machine learning, and robotics. The research focus is to enable intelligent agents to exhibit autonomy through perception, action, and planning. To that end, several works in the group focus on video understanding, common sense reasoning, self-supervised learning, robotics, and reinforcement learning. This is the X-Arm7 robot, which is used to do manipulation tasks. Specifically, the Wang group studies visual-based reinforcement, learning for robotics manipulation in simulation, as well as how to transfer the learned policy to real robots. Humans are good teachers in aiding robots to learn new skills. As you can see, humans can perform tasks inside the frame and the cameras on the side will record these activities. Then the human demonstration video is processed by an algorithm as a knowledge base for robots. The group hopes that with human demonstration, the robots can learn to achieve the task easier. For more information, please visit ece.ucsd.edu. Great. Thank you for that video. And now I'm going to turn it to Jia Rui and Yuzi to, you know, if you want to introduce more about your lab and provide more information, and then we can open it up to all our prospective students. Okay, thanks for playing the video. Uh, I'm going to share my screen. Uh, could you enable me to share? <laughs> yes, just did. Okay, yeah, thanks. Mm -hmm. Okay, uh, could you see my screen? Yep. Okay. Uh, uh, again, uh, welcome everyone. I'm the first year PhD uh, in uh, Professor Xiaolong Wang's group. And uh, I will introduce uh, uh, some research project in our group. It's some, some of them are undergoing projects, some, uh, some of them are submissions, some of our publication. And uh, you are very welcome to uh, raise any questions if uh, you, have, you are interested in some projects. And uh, here we go. Uh, our lab focus on the computer vision, re reinforcement learning, and the robotics. And uh, specifically, we have a self-supervised learning with the videos, learning interactions from videos, imitation learning, and the generalized generalization in reinforcement learning. And then I will introduce the first two part of our research, and the user will take take care of the rest of them. And uh, uh, for uh, the first one is self-supervised learning with videos. Uh, video is a very uh, natural representation uh, or natural data source in the real world, and uh, many uh, many uh, knowledge can be learned self in a self-supervised supervised manner from video. And we have some uh, 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 projects about learning visual representation for recognition. Uh, for example, uh, this is uh, with me and Xiaolong. Uh, last year, we submitted a paper about learning a unified representation for both the high-level semantics and low-level correspondence. For high-level semantics, is uh, is uh, it means that we can recognize a picture of a dog as a dog and recognize a picture of a cat as a cat. And for the correspondence, we can map, uh, we, uh, which means that we can learn from the uh, the videos to map the, this the head of this person to the head of uh, the, this person in another frame. 
And also we have some uh, we have some video uh, video project with the contrast learning, which is a very uh, popular topic in the last year. And the, our uh, our proposed method could learn uh, uh, could learn a better uh, representation uh, by contrastive cycle uh, by cycle cyclically contrastive learning. And uh, uh, this this uh, this learning representation could be used for the video object recognition uh, video action action recognition. And also. Uh, we, uh, we have some uh, uh, auto encoder project. Uh, this, uh, in this project, uh, we input a video and we feed it into an auto encoder to generate a, a 3D structure and a 3D trajectory. Uh, by, trans uh, by transform this uh, 3D structure, kind of a rotation or something like that, and uh, we, can, uh, we can get a new, uh, uh, we can reconstruct a new, uh, new wheel from, uh, it's a kind of novel wheel, since, and uh, we can uh, learn in a, in a, uh, a self-supervised manner. Here is some demo. We can uh, after train the model, we can input a simple uh, single image, uh, single image, and output 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 a video with some uh, some specific trajectories. And it's on the real uh, real asset one uh, one k uh, one uh, ten k uh, data set. And then here is another another demo. If we can input a single image and input trajectory to get uh, some uh, novel novel uh, videos. And uh, and here is another demo. And uh, we can also uh, we also have some projects learn the interaction from videos. Interaction can be uh, comprehensive as uh, we, uh, how the uh, human or the how the objects uh, interact with each other. And uh, there is some common sense in uh, interacting with these objects or humans. And uh, uh, this project uh, we can synthesize synthesize the human motions in three D sense. For example, we can uh, uh, we can generate a, hu a human pose to navigate uh, in a in a in a room without collide with the obstacles or the or the walls. And the the human could uh, start from some some position and end in some position without the collision with the other ob objects. And uh, and here is another demo. We, the human human body could walk through the room and sit under uh, sit under under the chair. And here is another uh, another demo. It's uh, sit on the sofa. With, you can see that the human moves very slow uh, smoothly from the start to the end point. And here uh, is another synthesis. It's, it's about the synthesis of the graphs. Uh, by graphs, we mean the uh, given an object a pose and how should we. Uh, uh, how should we grab the object to make the, uh, to to um, to make the object to, to not fall on the ground? So for different shape of the object, we have we may have uh, generated different shapes of the uh, gra uh, hand pose to grab the object. And input is uh, object point cloud or sampled on the mesh, and output output is a human uh, human human hand mesh. And for uh, for example, for uh, for stem, we can uh, we can uh, we can generate a pose like a, uh, to grab it in a in a, a round manner, and for uh, for a cam, we we may uh, generate uh, in another another pose to, uh, to grab the cam, and this is for in domain objects. And our method could also generalize uh, uh, these more in domain objects, and we could also generalize out of domain objects. These two objects uh, have never uh, present in the data set. However, we can uh, we can generate a, a reasonable graph to graph the object, and uh, this uh, this kind of graphing generation is very useful for the robotics manipulation, and uh, usually may introduce later. And uh, uh, this is uh, some de uh, more demos of uh, out of domain objects. And uh, uh, besides uh, besides the human uh, uh, human uh, hand pose generation, we can also uh, we can also uh, uh, predicts the three D bounding box or the pose of the object. We can uh, estimate the three D three D bounding box and the pose from uh, from the videos. And uh, here is uh, the uh, live demonstration of uh, both hand mesh and the object uh, object uh, uh, pose estimation. You can see that uh, we can estimate the object pose and hand hand pose very accurately. Here is another demo. Uh, it's a uh, uh, it's a demo with uh, uh, a hand moving a uh, moving a. Uh, uh, object to another object, and uh, it's a uh, picking up, uh, trying, trying, trying to pick up a screw, and you, you can see that the hand pose is a uh, very reasonable, reasonable generate a small, small uh, shape, to, so small uh, hand pose to generate uh, to grasp the screw. And uh, uh, we are, uh, this project, uh, and then uh, this is another project about uh, predicting the articulations. By predicting articulations, we uh, we mean that uh, how to predict the uh, the angle of the uh, specific object. For example, this angle of the stamper, uh, the 
is it maybe uh, 19 degrees or 10 degrees uh, open up and the door of the uh, washing machine and the the sunglasses uh, the, the how the sunglasses is is, is closed or open and we uh, besides the predicting the articulation angle we can also generate uh, objects uh, generate uh, objects with different articulation angle for example we can uh, sim uh, synthesize the open opening door uh, process of the washing machine or the moving uh, moving of the legs of sunglass and also the stem this is also uh, this is also a, a recent very recent work from our group, and uh, uh, the next part is about the imitation learning and the robotics. And I will hand over to Yujia to present uh, the rest of them. Uh, we can I, I can take any questions from here. Yeah. Any questions? Okay, cool. Uh, then I will stop sharing my screen. Uh, maybe we can save the question in the. Uh, at the end of the uh, presentation. Thanks, Jerry. And you can also submit your questions via chat. All right, Yuse, do you want to go? Sure, sure. Maybe, uh, maybe I can uh, take the later part. Okay, I'll see my screen. Okay. Okay, thanks, Jerry, for introducing the uh, perception and uh, the environment part of the uh, our our lab. So currently, we know that um, we have some perception models, and these perception models will make us understand the environment and make us a uh, model how the uh, the environment is. And this information can be used for further interaction. So this interaction can be made by either reinforcement learning or imitation learning. So I will introduce this part. Uh, for example, uh, as Jerry said, uh, in the previous work of perception work, uh, it, it makes us easy to perceive a human pose, as you can see in the left figure. And so this figure, uh, the demonstration of human can be perceived by, uh, by a post estimation of the human hand. And this information can be used to train a robot hand that can manipulate an object. So uh, this is one, uh, one research work from Professor Wang and uh, other uh, other group members to, to train a robot with state based imitation only for vector manipulation. Also, uh, this kind of demonstration can be used uh, to facilitate the learning of an intelligent multi finger robot arm. So, actually, for uh, such kind of high degree of freedom robot arm, uh, for traditional reinforcement learning, it may take a very long time to train such an agent, but with some human demonstrations, that will make things easier. Sorry. And also, uh, besides imitation learning, another important interaction is through the generalization of reinforcement learning. Uh, so uh, we know that reinforcement learning is a very strong optimization tool, but how can reinforcement learning generate to different environment is still a question. So here is a research work by Professor Wang that uh, using the vision-based RL to explore how to generate to different uh, like vi visual image uh, with a trained policy. As you can see in the training environment, the background is uh, totally different with the test environment. However, uh, by using some kind of uh, transfer techniques, uh, the learned agent in the left finger can be transferred into the right finger with the image only observation. So there's uh, kind of some illustration of this approach. Also, uh, the generalization can be made from uh, like to uh, to manipulate a very simple pendulum to the interaction of a real robot arm. So as you can see, the left figure is a, a simulated robot in the training environment, and the right figure uh, is a real robot that can... Tr the, the learned policy in simulation can be transferred via to the real world and make some progress. I'm sorry that maybe there's something wrong with the video encoding, so that's a little bit... Uh, the image is a little bit strange. <laughs> okay, this is also some figures here. Uh, with the left is a simulation world and the right is a real world. 
Also, this is another work um, by Xiaolong and Rihan. I think Rihan's here, right? Uh, yeah. Okay. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. So in this work, uh, it focuses on how the generalization across different tasks. So as you can see uh, in this environment, uh, there are lots of tasks like pick and place, pushing, and door opening, door closing, such kind of tasks. So uh, the, the objective here is that how to learn some kind of a generalization in a reinforcement learning setting. As you can see here, the two demos of the robot interact with the environment. Okay, that, uh, that's all for the research work in Professor Wang's lab. So actually uh, it covers from a wide range of topics from sensing, perception, and, and maybe in the future planning and the final uh, reinforcement learning and imitation learning, which is actually the interaction. Uh, and this is just a, a photo taken from Professor Wang's lab. And is there any questions for the Thanks, research in our lab? Yeah, we have a couple minutes left. So if anyone has any questions, please you can either unmute yourself and ask, or you can put it in the chat. Can I ask a question? Yes, please do. Um, so how much of this, like your guys' labs, how much of the work back end like machine learning on data sets versus do you guys do any like front end um, camera design or optical design or like that type of imagery stuff or is it mainly machine learning? Oh, that's a good question. I think from the perception perspective it's mainly machine learning, but in order to uh, do some like real world environment, uh, do some real world tests, especially work you work with a real robot, you need to design some uh, like some camera framework and how to design your camera space. And also, also this question will come with some, especially in some robotics experiment. But for perception, I think uh, most of the previous work have focused on the work, uh, learning on some kind of data set. But in the future, I think more and more work will focus on like some embodied AI or uh, interactive perception. Thank you.